do an example using nested for loops. What I want to do is I want to print out a multiplication table. And it's going to look something like this. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so on. 3, 6, 12, and so on. So the idea is, so 2 by 2 is 4, 2 by 3 is 6, you know, 3 by 3 is 9. So every number is the product of, you know, it's one on the top, the, it's column, and is row. And, you know, this is from 1 to 9. Uh, both ways, the, so nine by nine tables, and so on that way. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, the first thing to note is that we're going to be doing this in the console, so that means that you know we have to print the first row, then print the second row, then the third row, right? Because we cannot go back uh, in the console; that's impossible. So we're going to have to print the first row first. So that seems pretty easy. It's just the numbers one through nine. So let's do that first. So we're gonna have a for loop. Uh, this is gonna be. Oops. I'm gonna call it the column, right? Because it's gonna go from the column is gonna be one through nine, right? So let's then equal and from one to nine, column plus plus. Print out the column number, right? And uh, we can run that, and you see printed number one through nine. They're not in a row as I wanted them. So let's fix that. Remember the way to fix that. We just remove this, print it again. Oh, and now they're too close together. We gotta add a space. Add a space after the number. There. Oh, that's nice. So now we got the numbers one through nine in a row. It's just a simple for loop, right? Column goes from one to nine and prints out the column position, right? One through nine. So now I get to do this nine times. See, and print, change what I'm printing. So first, let's try to just to print this whole thing nine times so we have something that looks like a table. To do this whole thing nine times, since this for loop already prints the numbers one through nine, I just need to do this whole for loop nine times. So I need a for loop around the for loop. I'm going to use a variable called call for columns, and that is again going to go from one to nine as such. And then this I move down here, and then I have to indent everything so it looks nice. Get rid of that space. I run that. Uh, I got some problems here. Uh, oops, sorry. I should have named it. This is the row, right? The column is the one we already did. So the row goes from nine to nine, and then they have the column. So there you go, one through nine, and then one through nine. So you see, we need to start a new line right here. Um, how do I fix that? So after I print the numbers one through nine, then I need to start a new line. Which I can do by adding this print in there with with an empty string. Let's run that again, and now okay, I now I have a table. So I have nine columns and nine rows, and it looks better. Now the next thing is well, okay, I need to change these numbers now so that this is the product of the column, which is two, right, and the row, which is uh you know whatever the number is two in this case one two three four um so let's do that so what i need to do is instead of printing the column number i need to calculate the product which is just row times column and then print out that product like that there we go so I did that. Let me just see if we can get the code up here to show. Uh, maybe not. Um, so you see, it's printing four times two, eight. You know, four times three, twelve. So we got the right numbers there. Now there's still a problem in that you know things are not formatted correctly. And you see, the problem is that the 10 has two digits, right? 
So, you know, we're doing fine all the way to here. Then we get to the 10, it's one zero. Then we print the space. Now we print 12. Well, by then, you know, we're out of sync with the six above because that one only had one digit. So how do we fix that? Well, we cannot make the two digits numbers into one digit numbers because uh, you know that's impossible. Uh, however, we can make the one digit numbers look like two digit numbers by simply adding a space in front of them. So we can make the three instead of a three be space three. So it takes up a little more space. So let's do that. So here is our program here. You see we're going for every row. And then for every row, we do for every column. And then we calculate the product of that. So what I want to do is I want to say if the product is less than 10, right? So this mean, means it is a one digit number, one digit number. If it's one digit, then I want to print the space, then the number, then another space as usual. Otherwise, we're going to do as usual. So I'm going to run that. And there we go. That uh, looks much nicer. You see, you can see in the first one, there's a space right there. Right? Uh, in front of the one, two, right? So we're printing that space here. But we're not in front of the 10, right? So we print four space and then space eight. So it looks nice. Um, one through nine. Notice that, uh, of course, this only works uh, because it's all the digits are less, all the numbers are less than two digits. If we had gone, or say, all the way to 12, like that, and run that, then uh, you see these numbers get messed up because now we have three digit numbers. So, you know, to fix that, we would have to add two spaces for the one digit numbers one extra space for the two digit numbers and then zero extra spaces for the three digit numbers and we can do that fairly easily you can just add if the product is less than 10 else if the product is less than 100 then that so let's see if the product is less than 10 we want to add two spaces so that's one two if the product is less than 100 we want to add one extra space there it is Otherwise, no extra spaces. So we run that, and there we go. Now we have the three by the twelve by twelve table, and is nicely formatted. You see, things got more separated now. These guys have three spaces. Uh, so now let's say you wanted to, you know, you can print out just. Uh, a diagonal matrix, right? So, like in this case, you see we have five times two is ten, but we up here we have two times five is ten. So we have the same thing twice. Let's say I just wanted to do it once, so I just want the diagonal matrix. Uh, we can do that right here. So inside the for loop, you know, I can say, well, to print a diagonal matrix, that means I only want to print uh when the column is less than the row right so if the column is less than or equal to the row then i want to print so this is the whole printing part otherwise do nothing so i'm going to indent the whole thing like that and uh, i'm going to run that see if that works there you go so it did that i just printed this and i don't get that first line up there of course uh, that's a little bit Add that in, but you see, you know, the, we got a triangle this way. Uh, all I did was say added this line, right? If the column is less than the row, then do the printing. There's no else, so if the column is bigger than the row, we don't do anything. So there you go. This is the double nested for loops. Uh, it is very useful, right? So you will see it a lot. Uh, very widely used, uh, mostly because you know when you're writing a program, you are usually you know analyzing uh, data that comes in a table. So you analyze table data uh, like a spreadsheet, right? So if you're re reading a spreadsheet of data, uh, you're reading rows and columns. So you need this nested for loops. 
Uh, also, your screen, if you look at your screen right now, it's a set of, it's a two dimensional array of pixels. Uh, it's a 2D array of pixels. And so if you want to go through your whole screen, you, your X coordinate goes one, one way, the Y coordinate goes the other way, and you have you need a nested for loop to check every single possible pixel on your screen. So nested for loops like this, you know, the double nested for loop is very, very common, and you really need to be, become very familiar with it because you're going to use it a lot.